it's a uh, Wednesday, I, I think, and uh, you know what that means? It's the week of old comics. Hello. I thought we'd start this week with a new release of an old release. Um, this is the new deluxe version of the Omega Men story, which is, in my opinion, Tom King's best story. Um, probably the Omega Men, and followed probably by Mr. Miracle, then maybe like War of Jokes and Riddles. Um, he's written some bad stuff too. Uh, Heroes in Crisis is, in my opinion, horrible. And some of his Batman work is eh. War of Jokes and Riddles is probably the high point of it. The Wedding probably one of the low points. Um, this is a $50 book. I didn't pay $50 for it, but... Um, I don't know. I, I have the old version as well. Um, I loved it so much, I had to have the deluxe edition. It's a really great story. It does something in fiction that I, I don't think is done often or done well. Um, where the characters, you, they go back and forth from being, you know, like, are they heroes or are they villains? And these guys might be the bad guys to, wait, these guys might be the heroes. It goes back and forth and it's done so well. I don't think, I can't think of another example in fiction where it's done this well. And I think that's why, the reason why this is Tom King's best book. Um, the art by Barnaby Begenda. Oh man, his great. Um, some other artists as well doing other issues. But it's that nine panel grid that Tom King loves that I think it's a little annoying. Um, but it's also consistently done in that nine panel grid grid still the story it breaks up sometimes and it's those bigger panels depending on what the story calls for um Kyle Rayner who was the white lantern at the time this is rebirth era I'm sorry new 52 era uh, DC is kidnapped by the Omega men who may be terrorists or they may be not it goes back and forth. It's really great. It's pretty long. It was 12 issues, I believe. It's all collected. Now, whether this is $50 worth, I don't know. That that If you find it for cheaper, get it for cheaper. The paperback is um, okay, too. It's $25. You probably get it cheaper on Amazon. But I don't know... I think this is they 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 uh, the extras in here don't necessarily warrant a bump in price either. So if you're interested, I say get the paperback. But if you if if you already read it, you love it. The deluxe edition might be a nice um, addition to uh, your library to your bookshelf. They added this in this design. They added this new font, which is pretty cool in the spine but um, yeah I like the font but I don't know if it really fits the design of the book but oh well yeah pretty cool um next I just wanted to go really quick I, I covered this last week um, I read it and I just I, I don't want to necessarily give a review of it but I just found some interesting things about it the the there's a plot point in it where Lex Luthor challenges Superman to a debate and they would basically let the people of Earth decide whether they agreed with Luthor or they agreed with Superman and the loser would be killed. So in the book the reason why it's a, it's a post-apocalyptic book but the reason why it all goes down is because of the people. The people tear the superheroes apart. The people vote for Luther instead of Superman. And it's the most interesting part of the book, and it's not really touched upon. In fact, the only time you see people that aren't heroes in the book are sparse. Like, and they don't really have any lines or anything. It's mostly you run into heroes. But it's interesting to me that they were all torn apart 
you know, the the the, 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 the people of Earth decided the heroes needed to go. And, uh, I, you know, I was thinking about my own work, uh, my own book that's coming out, and how it, it's, it's about how awful people are. And I just wonder if, you know, the, the coronavirus and the, the elections and all the stuff is maybe making a lot of us, like, a little pessimistic about humanity and, you know, whether we're going to see that reflected in fiction. I mean, I was watching Devs recently, and that was another thought I had, like, are we becoming pessimistic about humanity? Which I think is probably true <laughs> and probably uh, deserved. But anyways, that's just a thought. It's it's worth checking out if you're a Batman fan. If you're not a Batman fan, you, you can skip it. Um, next, I thought what would be interesting is if we go over a couple different... Like, if we look through three different phases of Arthur Adams, who's my, one of my favorite artists, I thought we could go look at kind of like how his artwork has evolved by looking at like kind of three different eras of his artwork. Um, we start with... Action Comics Annual, um, John Byrne, Arthur Adams, Dick Giordano. It shows, uh, you could see the Art Adams in it. God, this smells like an old comic book. Um, you can see the Arthur Adams here, but at the same time, you look at kind of the uh, way he draws Batman, it's very... Um, I don't know, in the house style of the time. I mean, that's Arthur adams -y, but it's 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 not the Arthur Adams we can we we know know. But I mean, you still see him. You see the, the way he does lips, eyes. doing his thing yet but it, there's definitely signs of him there so then some time passes and then you know you go to his kind of uh, I guess you call it his thin face phase where this is monkey man and O'Brien his series um, you could he does faces thinner during this time. You also look at like the ex-baby era stuff that he did, Mojo Mayhem. And especially female faces, they're, they're drawn thinner. Even the monkey's face is kind of monkey. <laughs> um, I don't understand why this wasn't a more popular series. I, 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 I love it. I yeah, think you can see where it kind of like the way he starts doing hair. Then the thin face. To, this isn't his latest stuff, but I think this is a noticeable shift. This is probably like 2011. Um, 
I think one of the last time where he did interiors. I mean, Arthur Adams is now mostly known for covers. Uh, he does a lot of interiors anymore. But I think kind of like one of the key differences is kind of his faces, especially female faces, have gotten rounder. More cherubic. Um, I think male faces become a bit more angular, have a bit more shapes in them. But you can still see how he does hair is very similar. It's all very kind of cherubic, kind of chubby, chubby faces. Um, the artwork in this is fabulous. It's really great. But the story is... It's not amazing. The art really matches it well, the tone of the story. But. I really don't know what they were going for in the, the tone of the story, or the point of the story. But yeah, um, check out Monkey Man and O'Brien. I'm actually a big one. I, I actually even have the Ed O'Brien action figure. Um, they like. Uh, they did a series of Marvel toys that were other from other companies, and they did like Darkness, Marv from Sin City, which is weird because there's a better McFarlane toy <laughs> of Marv out there. Um, but if you got all of them, they, they form, they all come with a piece of Monkey Man, which sucks because I'd really like to have Monkey Man and O'Brien, but I mean, do you really want a striker figure? Do you really want a star figure <laughs> lying around the house? Lastly, something that the whole internet's been talking about, well, the comic book internet, is the um, Brendan McCarthy book. I have this book, the one that has all the best stuff. It has uh, Freak Wave, it has Skin, it has some of the stuff from sooner or later. But I've got actually only original Strange Days that Freak Wave appeared in, the old Eclipse comic. So I thought we'd look at this one rather than this one, because everyone's looking at this one. Good luck trying to find this one now, right now, by the way, since the internet's talking about it, prices on the Oh! But I we look at this one, the Brennan McCarthy, Peter Milligan, Freak Wave. This is some really out there stuff. Um, I think people have slept on it for so long and it, it you know, as it's being reintroduced into the kind of a comics culture, everyone's kind of excited about it. And, I mean, for good reason, but, um, he, you know, he hasn't always remained present in comic culture, you know, he did movies for a while, he did the reboot cartoon, so he'd kind of come in and out of comic books, but you can see kind of his Mad Max. Now this isn't, uh, this is Brett Ewins, this is not uh, Brendan McCarthy, so to read this Johnny Nemo story, you could only get it in the strange days here, I believe, but back to the Brendan McCarthy stuff, Paradax. Here's weird, there's shades of Arthur Adams, there's shade of Jamie Hewlett. Whether they were informed by this art is, uh, be, is interesting to, to think about. I mean, I think definitely Jamie Hewlett probably was. But, yeah. I mean, these are, are probably easier to find than the Milligan and McCarthy book. Probably cheaper too. 
I think the first one's easier to find than the other two. But yeah. Well, that's it this week. Tonight's program has been brought to you by 